Who do you think has more faith in you, yourself or others? No wrong or right answer, I'm just kind of curious to know. The ideas in this video were inspired by some time I spent playing Pokemon Go. My little cousins Aki and Kalita came around this week and I thought we'd have to take them outside a little bit. The idea of Pokemon coming to life was so dope to me I thought why not mess around with my own augmented reality. Joy, prosperity and love. Welcome to today's video where we are going to be making an augmented reality rug. If you don't know what augmented reality is, allow me to enlighten you. Now mind you, I'm talking like a guru as if like I know anything about it, but this is literally like the first time that I've done augmented reality. But essentially it's kind of like the clips that I showed you with Pokemon Go, where you take a real scenario with the video and then you add animations and GIFs on top of it to augment reality. I came across this sick app called Artivive and the reason I like it is because it's augmented reality without all of the programming behind it. I'm not a programmer, I'm just a creative guy who likes to make stuff and anything that can make my job easier is a win for me. So I've been doing a mini series on anime rugs mixed with sneakers. For me whenever I do pieces the point is to kind of constantly evolve what I'm doing and adding new technology is a great way to do that. We're going to be doing Charizard this time because everyone loves Charizard including me. Nostalgic vibes and we're also going to do the off-white dunk because there's some new dunks coming out but color wise I really enjoyed the green and orange ones because it kind of matches the color scheme of Charizard without being too much orange. Because there's so much great rug content out there I kind of only want to bring you new rug videos when I have something new to show and I think that doing it with augmented reality isn't something that I've seen before. Now don't get me wrong like nothing's new under the sun so I'm sure someone's done it somewhere but it's not such a big thing that I've personally seen it. Hopefully this is something new and it kind of gives you a new perspective on rug making and just bring on the good vibes you know. I'm really excited about learning something new for this video and as Erica Badu says peace and blessings manifest with every lesson learned. So let's take a quick second to get our peace and blessings from the number one place to learn Skillshare. On Skillshare you'll find an extensive range of classes covering a whole bunch of creative topics like drawing, crafting, painting or pretty much anything else creative that you want to experiment with. So in this video I'm going to be messing around a lot with animation and I was kind of rusty because I haven't done anything this intense in a while so it was really great to find this course by Jack Bartella called Animating with Ease in Adobe After Effects. Using After Effects is probably one of the simplest ways to do animations and it's really easy to pick up, especially when you have a good teacher guiding you. My favorite thing about Skillshare is the very specific and curated learning experience. They're always launching new premium classes and there's no ads, which means that I can stay 100% focused every time I wanna learn something new. The first 1000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So as I mentioned before, I've been doing a little mini series of anime rugs combined with sneakers. I like to combine things. Um, <laughs> and if you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I recently did the Blue Eyes Rat Dragon with a night dunk. And I thought that rather than drawing from scratch because I'm a lazy, lazy boy, I recolored the dunk that I made for the Blue Eyes Rat Dragon rug and reappropriated it for this Charizard one. The drawing app I'm using is Adobe Illustrator for the iPad. I've said before that I do that just because it draws in vector, but you guys did suggest a few other vector tools that I'm gonna try out pretty soon in the videos. I'm thinking of an appropriate video pretty soon as well, then that'd be dope. Usually when I draw, I start by doing a rough outline in gray, just so I can get the shapes together and then I work in with the colors after. Which of the following Pokemon was voted most popular in 2020. Charizard, Greninja, or Lucario. A lot of people ask about an art style as well. And one of the things that I do is very strong black colors for my lighting and shadow and very little blending. Um, it kind of gives like a cell shaded look and that's really the main reason why I do it because it reminds me of old video games that I used to play. So Charizard doesn't actually have as much yellow in the design as I'm using but as kind of like a really bright 
texture I think is really lovely to put on these orange scales just because it adds like a type of heat and intensity to the design and it kind of gives it my own signature I guess. Also when you're making rugs, it's really good to have a thick outline for what you're doing just because it can kind of get hard to see smaller details so the thicker the lines are usually the better. So you guys, the craziest thing happened to me, I was Casually like scrolling through the DMs after one of my posts and I had a DM for one of the producers at Complex. So a lot of the people whose content I watch just like casually like Joe Budden and Deezus Samero, they got at least their media start, I guess, on Complex. And Complex was always something that I kind of in the back of my mind would have loved to work with. And so it was so crazy because there was actually a DM from them and they asked me if I wanted to make a rug live on their Twitch channel. So clearly I said yes. And funnily enough, it's actually this rug which I made. So if you go to the complex Twitch page, you can actually see me making this on live. What is the estimated worth of the Pokemon brand as of 2020? 68.7 billion, 84.5 billion or 100 billion? You guys, I literally had so much fun doing this show. The host is a guy named Jake Polino, literally the nicest guy in the world and like such a sick host. Like he made the experience so easy. He was engaging with the chat, finding questions. On my Instagram, I do polls every once in a while. We even like did a few of the more like outrageous ones from my polls. It was really just like a sick life. I really suggest watching it. And also Jake has his own TikTok under the same name, Jake Polino. I'll link it down in the description. He makes like custom signs and a whole bunch of different art. Like he's really dope. I'm so glad that Complex gave me the opportunity to make this rug because it's definitely one of my favorite pieces. So when it comes to keyframe animation, I'm kind of useless. So special thanks to my boyfriend, Jason. He actually helped me out a lot with working out the frames for what I'm about to show you now in the animation. And also we have some anime stickers on his website if you want to go and check those out. They're dope. Okay, so we're going to start off with the main image, the first one that I've drawn. Basically, I've had to redraw every single image. So first I kind of slanted the eyes a bit, moved the claw in and changed the fire. The fire is going to change every single time. And then for the breathing, the mouth opens up again. So basically the idea is that the flame changes and there's a small loop animation of him kind of breathing. So then that loops into the first image again and then you go to a mouth half closed. With animation, you wanna make sure that you do movements in halves so that it's not too quick with everything that's happening. So with the mouth closed completely, you can start moving the neck up. It's gonna be a swift movement to start off with and then the rest of the keyframes are slow movements into the end of the head going up, just so it's not like a jarring stop. There's a few movements of the face structure and then the fire starts to breathe out, starting in the mouth and then moving out. From there, pretty much the idea is to just repeat this keyframe with slight changes. So the fire changes color a little bit. The eyes kind of blink a bit because obviously if you're breathing fire, you would close your eyes ever so slightly to protect them a little bit. So then once that's done, we got a slight breathe out. The mouth stays wide open, but the fire is stuck moving from the mouth and it's now moved out. And then from there, you got a small flame with the mouth closing. And then from here, what we're gonna do is just repeat the keyframes that we had before and then go all the way down with the head. Once again, changing the fire as we go along. So it's always moving as we're doing the animation. And this was a lot of redrawing to do. However, it's gonna work out really good in the end and it should give a nice animated effect, which kind of fits the anime style as well. So when you boot up After Effects, this is what you'll see. And um, I'm just gonna import all of the illustrations which I've done as AI files and drag them down to the bottom. I want them to be compositioned because that way I can actually manipulate what's going on inside of the file. So the first thing I wanna do is select everything that's gonna be moving and I wanna change the opacity. Right now you can see all of the layers bundled on top of each other, but you don't want that. 
So if I just click the keyframe option there and it will add these little diamonds on the side. And because they're all highlighted, if I just change one of them to zero, what it will do is it will change the percentage of the opacity to zero on all of them, except the one at the top, which hasn't been selected. Now I'm gonna move on to changing the way that the keyframes work. So a keyframe is basically a set moment in time that moves between each other. And when they're that diamond shape, they'll move steadily, but when they're these squares, they'll change instantly. So rather than there being a gradient, so if I wanted to do movement of something, it would move slowly, but with this, it just moves straight away. And I'm just gonna use this principle for the rest of the animation, changing the opacity so it moves from one keyframe and one illustration to the next. So interestingly enough, the augmented reality portion is actually the easiest part. This is the website Artivive. All you do is type in the name of the new project that you're working on and then start a new file. You start off with a picture of what you're actually gonna be using. So because I'm using a rug, I actually took a picture of the rug and then uploaded it onto there so that when someone holds the phone over the rug, it still recognizes it. Then we're gonna to go to the video and I've done the video obviously, but I've added a blue background to it. The reason is, it's the color that's not found in the actual animation itself. And then when I go over to the transparent Transparency settings in Artivive. It allows me to use the transparency tools and I can use the color picker to specifically remove just the blue so there won't be a square around the video and animation. And just like that, we have ourselves an augmented reality Charizard rug that breathes fire. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see some more, there's some on the side and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.